What's up, y'all? Now look, if you want those beautiful, cushy software engineering roles at big tech companies, you'll have to not only survive, but thrive in the gauntlet that is the techno interview. But don't worry, because today I'm going to be telling you exactly how to prepare for this beast. Hi, my name is Logan. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. And on this channel, I help people like you land jobs in big tech and dominate once you do. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you exactly what I did to pass interviews at Google and Microsoft and how you can do the exact same thing. We'll talk about the general approach I took to practice problems, take an in-depth look at the resources I use, and discuss the mentality I developed in order to prep for these interviews properly. And if you follow a similar path, I am confident that you will see similar success in your interviews as well. So let's jump in. All right, so let's kick this off by discussing the general approach to tackling these practice problems while studying. The first thing to note is that getting good at these practice problems is all about pattern recognition. And one of the best pieces of advice that I received when I was trying to prep for technical interviews was to tackle problems by category. And this really leveled my game up in understanding these patterns. So you'll want to pick just one category and dedicate a full one to two weeks on just that category. So that may mean that you tackle a raise one week, then strings the next, then graphs, etc. And while doing the same problem type over a week or two, your mind will get used to solving this type of problem. And then you'll start to link the patterns you're seeing together from one question to the next. It's also a better way to build a strong foundation so that when you see a problem from this category in the future, your muscle memory will start to kick in and you'll already be able to pick the algorithms that you'll use to solve this problem just from reading the problem statement. Now, as a quick side note, once you're getting closer to your interviews, like you already have them scheduled or something, then it'd be a good idea to start putting problems on random so you don't just train your mind to already know the category before you see the problem in the first place. All right, so going by category covers the approach to practicing from a broad perspective. Now let's shift gears and focus on how to tackle individual questions. And first up in that regard is to tackle questions as if you're doing them on game day. So first of all, start a timer of some sort and learn to solve questions in about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on their difficulty. And then pretend and you're giving a full interview when you're practicing that question. So ask clarifying questions and write them down. Create your own test cases and walk through them theoretically so you make sure you understand the problem. Match the problem to known categories like graphs, linked lists, dynamic programming, etc. Then quickly give a brute force solution to the problem first and jot down the algorithm at a high level. And then say why you'd actually like to come up with a better solution, which will likely come down to the poor space or time complexity of the brute force. Now consider common algorithms that are usually better than brute force, such as slide window or two pointer and discuss why you'd like to use those algorithms instead. Then plan the solution out with pseudocode and try to keep this plan concise yet clear. Stop here and discuss the time and space complexity of your solution. It's also a really good idea to shout it back to the brute force solution you came up with earlier and discuss why this one is so much better. Now you can implement the code. And this should honestly be one of the fastest parts of the entire process because you've already planned out the full algorithm and come up with a solution conceptually. Once you're done there, walk through your code with the test cases you came up with before and try to debug it on your own. Okay, so once you've done all that, then, and only then, it's time to run the code. Then of course you can see what kind of test cases you missed and where your code might be lacking and you can rework it to try to solve the problem on your own again after running the code. So if you follow these steps and actually treat your practice as if it's the real thing, you'll be feeling much more confident and comfortable with the entire process once the interviews come around. So my final piece of advice for the general approach to practice problems is if you're getting nowhere in 15 minutes, start giving yourself help. So this one can be kind of controversial because a lot of people will say to struggle with the problem and get it on your own because it will increase your encoding and your retention. And that's like all well and good if you're actually getting somewhere. But if you're not, there's really no point in just staring at the problem. And plus, I believe that this creates too much of a negative mental headspace and it can discourage you from starting study sessions in the future. Also, going to the help section of problems a bit faster is going to allow you to see more questions overall and it's going to help you with that pattern recognition that we were talking about earlier. 
And this is going to be a lot better than just struggling along with one specific question, retaining that one really well, but taking forever to do it and not seeing as many questions as you could have. So instead of struggling for a long period of time on one question, if you're too stuck and you're getting nowhere in 15 minutes, go to the hints. Head to the discussion section, start the conceptual overview of a solution video. And then if you hear or read something that you feel gives you a good lead on how to solve the question, stop the discussion right there and go back to the problem and try it again on your own. Give yourself like 10 minutes now to try to make some progress. And if you're still getting nowhere, it's back to the solution well again. And if you get to the point where you feel just completely stuck on a question, it's totally okay to just read or watch the entire solution. Just try and do the problem again on your own afterwards, and then come back in like a week or so and do it yet again and make sure you really have it down. Now, one note here is that you're definitely not expected to solve an entire question in 15 minutes or anything. So if you hit the 15 minute mark and you don't have much down but you still feel like you're making some progress then by all means keep pressing through okay so that was the general approach i recommend to practicing these problems now let's talk about the three resources you're going to need to be successful so the first resource i recommend is algo expert and y'all this platform is amazing this taught me how to do these problems really well before i had even taken data structures or algorithms it is seriously that good. So if you head onto their platform, today you'll find 160 curated questions that you can group by category, randomly, or by difficulty. And you already know that I am suggesting to group by category to start so that you can take advantage of starting to learn patterns of certain problem types. So once you click on a question, you'll be taken to a super sleek interface. Now this interface is all in one, so you'll be able to pick your programming language, read the question, see sample input and output. They have a built-in stopwatch or timer so that you can time yourself like it's the real thing. So make sure you get that rolling. Then you can use the scratch pad to plan your solution out, code it up in the solution window, and run all the test cases right there from the same interface. Oh, and you'll have access to like two or three hints. So honestly, it's a pretty dope technical interview environment. But the best part of the platform is definitely the video explanations. They have amazing instructors that go in depth on how to solve these problems with a conceptual overview that always includes a time and space complexity analysis. And then they do a full code walkthrough in Python. They also always have full solutions written out in whatever your language of choice is. So if you feel like you don't need the video explanation, feel free to just skip straight to those. But in my opinion, these videos are really what make the platform so worth it. And they helped me so much when I was learning to dominate technical interviews, especially at the beginning. All right, so the second resource that you're gonna need is the age old classic, Lead Code. So they say that repetition is the mother of skill, and this is where you're really gonna get to flex those repetition muscles. They literally have thousands of questions to choose from, which is pretty cool, but also a little overwhelming. So you'll definitely want a curated list to go through so that you don't waste your time doing questions that you'll likely never see. And you have two options for curation. You could spring for LeetCode Premium, where you'll get access to the Explore pages where you can do questions from the top companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, etc. And that's actually what I did, and I felt like those lists were really good, and they helped me a ton to prepare specifically for Google and Microsoft. And though I didn't actually get any direct repeat questions, unfortunately, I learned top patterns while doing these questions that I definitely use on the real day. Now, you don't really have to go with the LeetCode Premium route, as honestly, it's pretty expensive. So you could instead go with the second option I have here for curation, which is neatcode.io. This is a free website where the YouTuber NeatCode has created the NeatCode 150. And that is a set of the 150 most common interview questions. 75 of which come from the Blind 75, which is definitely one of the most popular curation lists out there. And then he added 75 of his own questions that he helped would really bolster the candidate in addition to the Blind 75. And on the site, you'll find the problem sorted by category. I love you for that neat code. And then the problems will link you to Lee code where you can take a crack at the question on your own. And if you get stuck, NeatCode has graciously made solution videos for every problem on there. So honestly, you just can't go wrong with this platform. Okay, so now you've grinded through a ton of problems through Algo Expert and LeetCode. And so now it's time to actually get comfortable with the interview itself. So that leads me to the last resource you'll need, 
which is Prem. And guys, this is probably my personal favorite resource to prep for tech interviews, and it is super underrated. I shouted the praises of this platform from the rooftops, so much so that anytime my peers were talking about technical interviews and I was around, they would literally already be ready for it and jump in and be like, this is where Logan's gonna chime in with Pramp again. And they were right. I did. Every time. Okay, so what is Pramp anyway? It's a mock interview site where you can set up sessions with other peeps that are also prepping for technical interview. So you pick the type of interview, you pick the time slot of when you'll be available, and then they'll match you with somebody else at that time slot to do a mock with. You'll get the question that you'll be giving them beforehand, and then you'll spend 30 minutes interviewing them, and they'll spend 30 minutes interviewing you. And this is where you'll get super comfortable solving a problem in front of a stranger. And it'll have such a positive impact on you when you go to sit for your real interviews. After the interview, you'll have a chance to give feedback back to the candidate, but I highly recommend directly asking your partner for feedback during the interview because not everyone puts time into the feedback after the fact. So if you ask them live, you'll get a better chance to at least put some effort in and try to give you some good advice. Oh, and the best part about Pramp is that it is completely free. So you don't have to concern yourself with buying yet another resource. So please do yourself a favor and get on Pramp. There's really no reason not to. And when you're two to four weeks out from your interview rounds, you can really go hard and focus in mostly on Pramp and make that the bulk of your studying. I mean, I did like 25 of these in the few weeks leading up to my interviews, and I was so happy I did because it led to me feeling so comfortable and relaxed on game day. Okay, so that wraps up our discussion on resources, and I wanna finish up by discussing the mentality that you should develop while prepping for technical interviews. But before I do that, if you've gotten any value from this content so far, please do me a favor, drop me a like, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so I can keep bringing content just like this in the future. But anyway, back to the content where we're talking about the mentality that you should develop while prepping for your technical interviews. A proper mentality can help put your mind in the correct state to learn properly and help you avoid burnout. And so the first point here is to understand that the learning curve is steep. So don't expect to be an algo expert overnight. <laughs> Gosh, I seriously can't believe I just did that. But seriously, just focus on small progress and over time you will improve. I mean, I remember thinking I have no idea how I'm ever gonna solve problems like these on my own. But before long, I was crushing new questions every single day and you will too. So just don't stress about it. So the second point to having the right mentality is to just show up. Studying for interviews can feel really daunting. So when you go to study, don't put too much pressure on yourself to perform optimally or at your peak performance every single day or something. Just worry about showing up to your study session in the first place. This will take a ton of mental load off of you. And once you get rolling, you'll often find that you end up performing at your peak performance anyway. You just needed to get started. So hopefully just focusing on showing up will make studying feel like a less grueling task. And so the last aspect for obtaining the correct mentality for prep is to keep the goal in mind. I know that the cliche advice is usually to learn to enjoy the journey or the process of getting to the goal. But this is a journey that can often feel like Mount Everest the whole way up. And many people just literally always hate it. So with that in mind, I'd say to focus on the goal instead this time. Visualize yourself working at your dream company with your dream income and your dream benefits and just use this to fuel your fire to keep grinding. And I think that this will make studying feel like less of a heavy lift and keep you motivated to keep going. And if you use these tools to develop the right mindset, you'll be much more likely to do the hard work even when you don't feel like it and you'll be a beast at technical interviews in no time. So that's really all you need to know to prep properly for technical interviews. But do keep in mind that this was just the portion to learn how to prep for these tech questions. So if you want the full details on how to land your first software engineering role from start to finish, then definitely check out my video that I made on that topic, which I'll link right now. And if there are any other aspects to technical interview prep that you feel like I missed, definitely leave a comment down below and help your fellow technical interview preppers out. But with that, I am out. But remember, we'll all make it together. Just gotta keep praying.